what code did I select? I'm not sure if it's gonna if it's if it's gonna know what code I select. Oh my god! Essentially, this is to remove that friction of you actually copying the code and pasting onto ChatGPT for ChatGPT to then get that information and process that information and provide your response. Please. So I'm saying please because you know who knows AI might take over in a couple of years and please ChatGPT just do this for me, please. ChatGPT can now use your computer. Or should I say, use your apps. Now, OpenAI just dropped something really, really amazing. They call it work with apps, right? Now, if we go to the blog post here, I'm going to link this link again, like I always do in the comment section or in the description of this video. And if we read this, we see it was updated today. So this is something which is quite new. And they mentioned here, ChatGPT for macOS can now work with your apps, right? In this early beta, you can let ChatGPT look at coding apps to provide better answers or better results. Now, the H3 forward to mentioning here that work with apps is currently available for ChatGPT Plus and team users only. And ChatGPT Enterprise and ADU users will obtain access in the following weeks. So if you're a ChatGPT subscriber, plus subscriber, you should be able to have access to this if you have downloaded, of course, the ChatGPT desktop app for macOS. So if we scroll down here, we're going to see the mention here. ChatGPT can now read content from your coding apps, bringing you smarter, more accurate answers tailored to your work. So here I see a possibility where you're working with, um, you're working on your code editor in your code editor and your either working on some project or whatsoever thing, or you're writing something in an editor, and then you need to ask for context, or you need to ask for help for, from ChatGPT. And essentially, this is to remove that friction of you actually copying the code and pasting onto ChatGPT for ChatGPT to then get that information and process that information and provide your response. So this is a pretty neat feature from OpenAI. And we scroll down, we're going to see here for now, they have like, again, like we can see here, they are in beta. So they have just a few couple of apps. And of course, these apps need permission. If they don't need permission, we'll probably cut. You probably wake up one day and then you find ChatGPT maybe running some commands in your terminal. And talking about the terminal, I'm actually pretty scared about this because I hope that, I mean, I know we're probably going to get there where ChatGPT would have the possibility to run commands on our computer, but I wouldn't necessarily suggest anyone to do this on their computer. Probably have that running on a VM or like, you know, on a controlled environment, controlled environment or like a virtual box or something like that. Now, if we scroll down to say, you will see a banner over the chat bar. So I'm not going to read everything that is here just to save us time. This is a quick video I just wanted to make today because they just dropped this and it is really, 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 really cool. Now, I have to say that I haven't tried this yet. So we're going to be doing this together. We're going to be trying this together and see how essentially it works. So from the screenshots, it looks really amazing. You know, you have this sort of um, sort of preview of what ChatGPT has actually viewed from your source code from that particular app, right? So we have all of this, and then you can you can, you can like hover here, and you see focused on the selected lines. You see from line this to line that, and stuff like that. So again, like I said, I'm gonna add the link to this blog post down in the description of this video, so you guys can check it out. So as you can see here, I just launched my ChatGPT app on macOS and I am currently using the ChatGPT 4.0 model, which we have here. I'm not sure if it works with other model like the O1 mini and the O1 preview. I'm not sure. That's definitely something we're going to have to try it out. Now, to have access to this feature, you're going to see this little cursor down here with some with like a box there. You want to click there. And as we can see, we mentioned earlier, it is currently on beta. So when I have that here and I think we have only access to three apps. I'm not sure if this actually detects the app I have installed onto my computer and actually mention um, the apps that are inactive 
or I, I'm not sure how exactly it works. I think these apps are built by OpenAI. I mean, the plugins or whatsoever thing, they are built by OpenAI, and then you can essentially have access to that inside the ChatGPT app. So as we can see here, enable, okay, I have the terminal enabled, but I don't want to give access, permission needed. It says here, permission needed. I don't want to give access to ChatGPT to my terminal. I'm very scared of that. I would not want to do something like that. I don't recommend anyone to do something like that. So probably the code editor, yes, maybe for, you know, for the sake of, you know, just reading and focusing on certain lines and having access to certain, um, lines of code so i'm just gonna click get here and when i click get i see here it mentions i it looks like i need to download an extension for this so this is actually crazy how to install work with apps with virtual studio code extension make sure they say here make sure you are on the latest version of chargerbt mac os download the extension so it looks like i need to download an extension for this so i'm just get, gonna download the extension let me read that again in Visual Studio Code, open the command palette, command shift P and choose extension install. So command shift, command shift P, extension, extension, that is, that's weird. Extension install, okay, install, okay, that one. So I click on that. So I believe I'm gonna have to go to that particular file and just select that particular file and then what does it say here so it says here hybrid mode is enabled okay completed okay it says here completed installing extension i hit back to to see verify that chat gpt work with vs code on mac os appears in the extension sidebar the if i come here oh yeah so once i come here i'm immediately able to just click at here the plus icon and i should pretty much be able to select the code i believe so working with apps so by the way guys this is the source code of Jarvis. for those of you who don't know Jarvis, we're building Jarvis from the mcu and it's been a while i haven't pushed any updates on the repository this is um a sort of we're working on a couple of features just stick around, make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel if you're not and smash that notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming videos because we're gonna be releasing the new Jarvis model pretty, pretty soon. And the new Jarvis model is gonna be sick because we're gonna have things like function calling and stuff like that into the model. So I wanna try to select, let's say I'm gonna select all of this, right? And I select all of this working with VS Code. So I just selected all this all this code so i say what code did i select i'm not sure if it's gonna if it's if it's gonna know what code i select oh my god by the way guys for powerful gpu server hosting to run llama or ai task gpu mod is an outstanding choice offering over 200 gpu models tailored to all your ai needs so what are you waiting for Rush down in the description below, use my exclusive 20% discount coupon, click on the Black Friday link in the video description for up to 55% off. This lifetime discount applies to every renewal, so take advantage of this incredible saving while it still lasts. Thank you so much GPU Mart for providing us your services. And by the way guys, I do get a commission just to be frank with you, I do get a commission on the purchases you would make if you use my exclusive link below. Now back to the video. This is insane. Look, look, like that is crazy. So I, that is insane. So I'm not sure if I go to the extensions here and I chat and I type chat GPT. I'm not sure if the, inst the extension is going to pop up chat GPT chat gpt no it doesn't pop up here i don't think it does pop up here that is that is that is ins that is insane that is insane so after installing that i'm not quite sure if i want to disable that i'm not sure where i could possibly disable that but 
that is pretty 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 cool now it knows what code i selected so it it uses that as context so if i click here for example that's weird so i don't have the source code i selected here or the lines i selected here unlike what they mentioned here in their blog post they mentioned here that if we select this we should be able to have the focus lines so i'm not quite sure maybe it's because this is um xcode or i'm not sure but i believe you should be able to work irrespective of the um code editor you're using and again guys this is absolutely in better and guys this is really amazing i can't wait to be using this in my workflow and in you know building apps and stuff like that I believe ChatGPT at some point they're going to release something like a VS Code sort of like cursor or, you know, sort of like Bolt.new or something like that, which is going to leverage this and be able to, you know, essentially just help you write code. And it would be interesting to see something like, you know, it does these changes and then you can equally run the changes and, you know, essentially just check it. So let's say um, I want to add another um, keyword right I want to add another keyword here I say please can you add another keyword in the trigger phrases the keyword should be something very common please so I'm saying please because you know who knows AI might take over in a couple of years and Please, ChatGPT, just do this for me, please, right? So let's do this and hit enter. Oh, I made a mistake then, put one. So it does add another keyword. So the original keywords was Google Day and Google For. It added another one. And I'm not sure if it's possible that it inserts it inside my code. So I don't think this is going to work, guys. Can you insert this? in my code I don't think it's gonna do this it's it's not it's it's not it's not here's the updated version okay no I mean can you please okay we have to say please remember please insert this into my existing code on the as code can it do this I don't think so. Unfortunately, I cannot directly modify the files um, in your local VS Code environment. And that's pretty much about it. Guys, if you want to check out Jarvis, check out the videos we made earlier about Jarvis, there's going to be a link here which you can just click on it and see what Jarvis can do. Again, this is a project which is still in development. Like you can see here, there are a lot of, a lot, a lot of changes which I haven't pushed yet to the GitHub repository. I would be pushing this in the next coming weeks. That's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed watching this video, please consider smashing that subscribe button and hitting the notification bell so you won't miss interesting videos like this one. Thanks again and see you guys in the next one.